Hey guys, so I don't know if you could tell in yesterday's video, but I wasn't feeling very good. I was really congested and um, something that always seems to help me when I get like that is hot homemade soup. Canned soup has got so much salt in it. Um, so if you make it yourself, you can control the amount of salt that's in it. But yeah, I, I'm going to try and um, film how I make this soup because what I normally do when I cook is I will start with a recipe from somewhere and then I modify it and make it what I want it to be. I change some of the ingredients, I change the technique a little bit and make up my own. So this is my recipe for Japanese soup and it's really easy to make and you know it's cold and flu season so it's a good time to know how to do something like this and I end up eating way too much of it because it's delicious but um, yeah let's get started okay guys here we go so the first thing you're gonna need is a big soup pot and then I'm going to use this container of chicken broth and I get the one usually that either says reduced sodium or low sodium and um, make sure you shake this up because the solids tend to settle to the bottom and you want to make sure that they don't get stuck on the bottom of the container so we're just going to dump this in here to begin Okay, the next thing you're going to need is some kale. So I've put some kale in a colander and I'm going to rinse this. And the first time that you make this, you may want to measure it so that you have somewhat of an idea how much is there. Because um, this comes in huge bunches, so you, you there's no way that you're going to need that much. So the first time I made this, I measured it and it measured out to be four ounces which doesn't sound like very much, but it's not very heavy. So this is, I just eyeballed this. I didn't weigh it, but this is about four ounces. I can just kind of tell by looking at it now. So I'm going to wash this. So I just rinse it under some cold water. Okay, so the next thing you're going to need is a cutting board and a knife. And you're just going to cut the stems off of the leaves and throw the stems away. Then we're going to put two eggs in some cold water to boil. Okay, so I've cut up my kale and this is just like small chunks. You want this to be like um, bite size or smaller because kale is a pretty hardy plant and it doesn't break down in water the way, say, spinach would. So you don't want your pieces to be any bigger than this. And you can cut it up even smaller if that's the way you like it. It just all depends on what your preference is. Now, as far as the eggs, you can either hard boil them or soft boil them. You could even fry them if you wanted to. Um, but they're going to go into our soup at the end and they need to be cooked ahead of time. You can even cook them the day before and just put them in the refrigerator and that will eliminate that step then you won't have to do it while you're making the soup but I like to do it while I'm making the soup because that way they're nice and hot and I can pour the hot soup on the cooked eggs so it looks like my chicken broth is starting to boil so I'm just gonna add my kale to the chicken broth now And as far as the measurement goes, um, removing those stems isn't going to change the overall measurement that much. So you're going to want to grab a large spoon now and just give this a nice stir. And you can turn the heat down I would turn it down to somewhere between medium and medium high. Otherwise, the um, it'll start getting foamy and 
you don't want it to uh, you don't want it to spill over onto the stove. That would not be good. Okay, so I turned the heat down to between medium and medium high, and now it's still boiling, but it's settling down a little bit. So I'm going to set a timer now for 10 minutes and um, just cook the chicken stock and the kale for 10 minutes. And as far as the eggs go, those, um, I think I'm going to do a soft boil today. If you want to do a hard boil, you can go 15 minutes uh, and you're going to want to turn the, the heat down on that once it comes to a full boil. But I think I'm going to try a soft boil today and see if I like that better in the soup. Okay, so I just washed the colander and the cutting board and the knife that I used, and I came back over to the stove to see what was going on here, and it looks like the eggs are boiling furiously. So I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna turn them down to medium so that the water doesn't boil over. Now, as far as the chicken stock and the kale goes, it looks like I may have turned the burner down a little too far on that one. So I'm going to turn that back up to medium high and see if I can get this boiling again because um, I want to make sure that my kale is going to be cooked enough. We'll just give that a stir. And then while, while we're waiting for those two things to cook, I'm going to show you the next ingredient. This is red salmon. This my favorite one is Rubenstein's. It's an Alaskan fancy blueback salmon. And as far as I know, it only comes in one size, but I use the 7.5 ounces size. And this is already cooked and everything, so I'm just going to open this up. And uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so I opened up my can of salmon, and if you've never had canned salmon before, it's got bones in it, but you don't have to remove them because they're super soft and you can just chew them right up. It says right on the can, sustainable catch, salmon skin and bones provide valuable nutrients. So there's salmon skin and bones in here, and it's really good if, if that kind of freaks you out about the skin and the bones being in there then this might not be the recipe for you but I've eaten salmon right out of the can all my life well most of my life and it doesn't bother me at all and it's really delicious it just gives it more flavor so then the other ingredient that I want to show you is nori this is Emerald Cove Organic Pacific Nori, but, um, you know, just buy what you can find because nori is not always the easiest thing to find at the supermarket. I got this one at Whole Foods because I happened to be in that area that day, so I knew that they would definitely have it. But they do have it at regular supermarkets, but like I said, you may have to ask somebody to find it because... They usually have it in some weird random place that makes it difficult to find. This comes in sheets and the sheets are the size of this bag. So as you can see by the size of my hand, it's quite large. So we're just gonna use one sheet of this. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break it up into small pieces and throw it in the pan with the kale and the chicken stock once that kale is cooked. Okay, so my timer is just about to go off. So while I was waiting, I dumped the can of salmon into a bowl. There it is, there's my timer. Um, I dumped the can of salmon into a bowl, but before I did that, I just drained the water that was in the can into the sink. So I dumped the salmon in here and I just kind of broke it up a little bit into more like bite-sized chunks. And uh, now we can go over to the kale and chicken broth here. I'm going to shut off my burner and then I'm also going to shut off the burner 
for the eggs. And this is what one sheet of nori looks like. And the consistency of it is like paper. So I'm going to rip this up into little bite-sized pieces. And let me see if I can do this with one hand and hold the camera. So maybe I'm going to, the, the pieces will be about this size, maybe a tiny bit smaller. And I'm going to just rip that up and throw that in the pot with the kale and chicken broth. Okay, so I ripped up the nori and put it in here. And I don't think I told you what nori is. It's seaweed. So it doesn't um, doesn't have a lot of salt in it, which is so surprising. You'd think that it would, but it doesn't really add much salt at all. But it does give it like um, sort of a slightly fishy flavor um, mixed with it's sort of a vegetable taste. It's kind of hard to describe if you've never had it. But uh, seaweed nori is considered a sea vegetable. And so we're just going to stir this up a little bit. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some coconut oil. And this is great value which is walmart's brand great value organic unrefined virgin coconut oil and i'm just going to take a, a scoop of it this is about a tablespoon but i have it sitting on a teaspoon and we're going to put that we're going to put that in with the salmon like that now the next step I'm going to do, um, I'm holding the camera here with one hand, so there's no way I can show you, but I'm sure you've all cooked eggs before like this, either soft boiled or hard boiled. So I'm going to drain that water off. I'm going to cool the eggs down under cold water so that I don't burn my hands. And I'm going to remove the shell. And let me give you a little tip. It's much easier to remove the shell if you Give the eggs a little crack on the side of a bowl and then roll them between your hands and the shells come off much more easily. They come off in larger chunks. So I'm just going to do that now. Okay, so I've got my eggs peeled and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them. Oh, that came out nice. Yeah, I like that consistency. So I'm going to quarter these so that they'll be a little bit less messy to eat once it's in the soup. Yeah, I think I really like that consistency. Somewhere between a soft boiled and a hard boiled. Okay, now what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to take half of what is in that pot and transfer it to this. And I'm saving the other half. When it cools down, I'll put it in a container and put it in the refrigerator. And I'll reheat that tomorrow. And then just add some more salmon and some more cooked eggs and some more coconut oil. And then I can have it again tomorrow. But this is what it looks like when it's done. And that, my friends, is my Japanese soup. Thanks for watching. If you like this, make sure you give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time. Bye.